Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Malley here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for July 22nd, 2021, recorded around 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Not too much to talk about today, but a look at a system that might be developing off the southeast United States coast and a look at when more favorable conditions could be setting up across the tropical Atlantic. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, not too much is occurring out there. Uh, we have this tropical wave that is kind of embedded in here, embedded within this larger Saharan air plume to the north. Just generally unfavorable conditions that exist across the tropical Atlantic, mainly due to a suppressed phase of the Kelvin wave that is passing across the region. And just general, the interseasonal variability is just unfavorable right now. Uh, but the area that we'll be watching here is actually located just near the coast here of Georgia and South Carolina. And this will be moving off towards the south and east over the next couple of days. And this uh, could end up developing into a tropical cyclone uh, as it kind of meanders around that area over the next couple of days. We can see this here better reflected on a more zoomed in look here. Again, this is the area that we're watching right now. We noticed that uh, basically here from... Uh, the wind barbs on the station plots here, we notice that there is some cyclonic curvature here. Uh, this basically kind of represents that we have at least a trough of low pressure that is located in through here. And I'm estimating the position to be right around here. And this will be exiting off the coast here of Georgia uh, within the, the next matter of hours. And then this will uh, be over the Gulf Stream here, where then after that, development chances will begin to increase here. Again, development chances are only at a 30% over the next five days. And this is expected to kind of meander just off the Southeast coast here, anywhere from about South Carolina to Georgia, to off the uh, Northern coast here of Florida, we could have a system that tries to just meander around here in the Gulf Stream. So it will be very interesting to see how that progresses. Again, right now, uh, looking at the visible satellite imagery, not really that impressive. And if we kind of jump down to a more a local look at everything, we can kind of take a look that this is just not really that impressive at the moment. We can kind of see the broad area of circulation that is embedded within here and some shower and thunderstorm activity diurnally driven uh, as a result of that, but we're not really seeing a very vigorous circulation, but it will be moving off there and it is there. And we see that kind of reflected there in the visible imagery, but it's not very well defined. Uh, so this will take some time to get better organized over the tropical Atlantic here and likely uh, will not really have that much of favorable conditions, which we'll look at here in a moment. So uh, one thing I did find interesting, this is for the Eastern Pacific Basin, but we had a flurry of tropical cyclones in the Eastern Pacific Basin uh, since the last time we kind of checked uh, everything. And this is now going through today, uh, July 22nd. This is the accumulated cyclone energy, the ACE index. And we have actually gained a significant amount of ACE now in the Eastern Pacific Basin, where we are actually now kind of running at the upper end of climatology. Uh, this goes from 1950 through 2020 climo. And we're now uh, sitting comfortably kind of above average with climatology at this point. Now, the one thing that is uh, cer certainly something to kind of keep in mind is that this, of course, is nowhere near the maximum here, but this is above last year uh, by a very substantial margin. We are at uh, today officially 35.3 units of ACE, and the overall season index from last year was only 77.3, and most of that came uh, really between July and uh, kind of September in through here. Now, uh, again, we will be seeing a little bit of a break. So we'll be getting a little bit of a break from the tropical cyclones in the Eastern Pacific, but we may have one or two more storms that end up forming to boost up the ACE index even more. Uh, this is, yes, running above the Atlantic Basin for this time of the year. Um, however, again, this is kind of expected. The Eastern Pacific always kind of takes hold uh, first, and then the, the, it starts to transition into the Atlantic as we progress through the remainder of the season. So uh, the ACE index for the Eastern Pacific is well above average uh, for this time. It, it comfortably sits within just about that 25 percentile climo, uh, but it's not anything substantial, or I'm sorry, roughly about 25, 30 percent of climo. But again, it's it's not, you know, something like, you know, way up here where it's well above average. So it's just slightly above average. But we'll be watching it. Uh, as we progress over the next couple of days. Now, taking a look here at the sea surface temperature anomaly map, this updated as of yesterday, July 21st. And again, what we'll be watching here as we progress through the next several weeks is how this area begins to rapidly cool here in the tropical Pacific here. 
And uh, as it does so, again, this is going to be something to kind of keep in mind. We're likely now at this stage heading towards a La Nina phase uh, for the uh, peak of the Atlantic hurricane season and into the winter months here. Uh, this has begun to rapidly uh, undergo a period of substantial cooling where now the Nina 3-4 index, which is this area right in through here, has now comfortably fallen, uh, has comfortably fell rather, uh, to about 0.5 uh, Celsius below the long-term average. And we'll need this to hold for several months to, for it to officially become a La Nina pattern. Uh, but either way, the tropical Pacific is cooling. And in the meantime, the tropical Atlantic here is beginning to warm up quite substantially here. We noticed that the main development region, especially from about 10 degrees north latitude southward, has now warmed up. We're comfortably sitting with water temperatures about 0.5 Celsius uh, above the long-term average at this point. The northern Atlantic is really ongoing in a crazy phase right now uh, where these sea surface temperature anomalies are about 4 to 5 degrees Celsius above the long-term average. This is going to help to prominently establish a blocking ridge of high pressure uh, during the peak months of the hurricane season. And this will likely be uh, kind of one way that tropical cyclones get forced uh, towards the west here. In the meantime, right now, we have kind of a break here. We don't really have a very prominent uh, upper level ridge out here. So storms would easily recurve away. Uh, but towards the peak months of the hurricane season, we'll see this ridge really become a dominant out there and established and force these systems westward. So, uh, you know, it's really only a matter of time before these storms get here. Uh, we kind of noticed that even the northern parts here of the, the MDR are starting to warm up now at this point. We'll have to see if that kind of continues. The one thing I did find interesting is the Atlantic Nino event uh, has certainly waned. Water temperatures here are still about one to one half uh, degrees Celsius above the long-term average, but it has waned from, from these ridiculous threes and fours that were out here. And because it's waned a little bit, it has uh, somewhat transferred that warmth uh, northward into the Atlantic Basin, into the tropical Atlantic. So we'll see how much this warms, and that's going to really be kind of the prominent factor going into the upcoming hurricane season, is just how much that uh, lifts northward, and how far north does this warm layer actually extend. Because if it extends at a fairly north latitude, again, we'll be seeing these tropical waves have a pretty favorable environment to work with. Uh, off the southeast coast, again, water temperatures just at or slightly uh, above the long-term average. And in the Gulf of Mexico, basically everything is just near the long-term average as well. So well, the one thing keeping the tropical Atlantic kind of quiet is the suppressed phase of the Kelvin wave that is passing through the basin right now. Uh, this is now focused kind of over the central Atlantic. And we can kind of see even a phase of that over Africa. So this is basically shutting everything down over Africa and the tropical Atlantic. And this will likely be the case for at least the next couple of weeks, probably the next about two or three weeks or so, as uh, what's going to end up happening is, again, we kind of get these phases of the suppressed phase to kind of kick into the Atlantic and they move across over Africa and shut things down. But things will likely begin to pick back up here once we start getting into the kind of the middle part of August, I do believe is when things will really probably start to ramp up after that time. Again, right now we're de just dealing with a very unfavorable interseasonal variability phase, uh, but the Madden Julian oscillation will likely swing around into the Western hemisphere and into the Atlantic. And uh, that will probably work wonders uh, as we approach the peak there of the hurricane season. And we'll probably be dealing with storms too, uh, into and after the peak of last uh, of the hurricane season, similar to last year. We also noticed that there is an enhanced phase of the Kelvin wave right now, kind of over the West Pacific and Eastern Pacific. And this will likely shift eastward over the next couple of weeks. And this will likely begin to trigger at least one or two more storms in the Eastern Pacific Basin uh, as we progress through the next couple of weeks there. So taking a look here at the GFS forecast, again, this is the 12Z run valid for 18Z this afternoon or 2 p.m. So basically now what we're really watching right now is, again, we have this big ridge of high pressure that's out across here and kind of a second uh, axis of this ridge over the Gulf of Mexico. But it is weaker in through here, uh, so we don't really have things getting shoved westward because we actually have a trough that is approaching here. And what we notice is that we have this area of disturbed weather right now kind of over Georgia. And this is the area that the Hurricane Center is monitoring at this point. 
Now, conditions ahead of this right now, sea surface temperature wise, are pretty warm. If we actually kind of go back here and we look here at the upper ocean heat content map, we notice that there is some pretty sufficient values that are over here across parts uh, of the Western Atlantic here. And especially in the Gulf Stream, you have uh, these lighter blues and even some shades of green, which is uh, indicative that there is some uh, sufficient upper ocean heat content for tropical cyclones to work with them. Now, as the system begins to kind of emerge off, we notice that the GFS has kind of been amplifying uh, this wave a little bit more than what it has on recent runs. It's been amplifying this wave. Now, we have kind of two things taking place. We have a ridge right now that is kind of centered. This is within about 36 hours. So by 8 p.m. tomorrow, we have a ridge right now that is kind of over parts of the central United States. And then we also kind of have this ridge right here to the east of Bermuda. And some of the extent of that is just right around here. We have this trough here. So we're kind of uh, stuck in between a very shallow steering flow that is occurring across this area. And if we look here at the vortex average sounding uh, for this area, we notice that, again, the steering flow is relatively light. We have winds here that are generally coming out of the south-southwest and at the middle part of the atmosphere, middle and upper levels of the atmosphere, you have winds that are blowing out of the west here. And again, this kind of represents that we do have some vertical shear because you can see that again, we have southeast winds at the surface or southwest winds at the surface changing westernly. And you can kind of infer, you can see the wind barbs in through here, at least on the model forecast, that there is some cyclonic flow uh, in this area. now. Uh, there is also some dry air in this environment. You notice the relative humidity is just at about 80%, but there is some mid-level dry air in this part of the atmosphere. And this mid-level dry air uh, could get worked down to the surface. And if it does so, you could see that generate outflow pools and just generally create an unfavorable environment for tropical cyclone formation in this area. So this is by uh, 8 p.m. tomorrow. Now, if we move out here to about 12 Z Sunday, you notice that again, we get... Uh, kind of this northern part of the wave that kind of separates from the southern part of the wave. And at this point, it's going to be very crucial in determining what could happen at this point. Now, if we go to the GFS and we look here at the 200 millibar winds in the top of the atmosphere, we notice that, again, there is a little bit of cyclonic flow that is kind of embedded in here. Uh, we have this trough axis that's digging in across here, uh, mainly now out across the North Atlantic. We have a cutoff low here and a ridge of high pressure over here and a tut future tropical upper tropospheric trough upper level uh, low that is located over here near uh, the islands. Now, again, what's going to be happening is we notice that this ridge is actually going to dive southward. This cutoff high is moving southward. And as it does so, it's kind of moving towards the southeast. And as it does so, it's going to create this really whipping around of the wind uh, rapidly moving to, to the west here. And so the low level flow is going to begin to change and it's going to feel more of a westernly flow around the ridge. And again, if we go back to the 850 vorticity map, uh, this is really by about uh, 2 p.m. Sunday. And we have this axis uh, wave energy over parts of the Florida Peninsula at this point. So uh, we'll go back here. This is about the 8 p.m. or this is about the 2 p.m. tomorrow where our system, or I'm sorry, 2 p.m. on Saturday, rather. And we notice that, again, if we take a look here at the sounding, this atmosphere is just not all that favorable. Uh, first of all, we have some southeasterly winds here at the surface, uh, advecting northward, basically, uh, just above about 700 millibars. Uh, so this induces a little bit of shear in this part of the atmosphere as well. And then they also change back westernly uh, at about uh, 300 millibars or so, really about 400 millibars. And we also notice that there is uh, some pretty stable air all the way from about uh, really about 800 millibars or just about uh, 4,000 feet onwards uh, until you reach the top of the troposphere. There is uh, some dry air aloft, and that's why the relative humidity numbers are only 65%. So the relative humidity drastically increases. Now, not to say that something couldn't form in this environment. It's certainly not the most unfavorable I've ever seen. Uh, but this mid-level dry air does, again, pose concerns because thunderstorms that go up in this environment will quickly take advantage of this dry air aloft. And that's why the decay values, the downdraft cape values are over 600 uh, because you get the potential for this dry air aloft to be transported down to the surface and create microbursts. 
And uh, that's kind of what we look for in severe weather soundings and stuff like that for like, you know, summer times in like Florida, et cetera. Uh, very used to it here, but for tropical cyclones, this is not something you want to see. You want to see a, a vertical column that is much more saturated through the entire profile, uh, something like that. And we just don't see that here. So the chances for tropical cyclone genesis are not really that high and I'm leaning more towards something not really developing. Either way, Hurricane Center does give us a 30% chance. This will move, then the, this piece of energy hinted on the GFS moves into uh, parts of the Gulf of Mexico here, where again, if we take a look here at whatever is left in this part of the environment, just really not all that favorable. Some pretty strong capping and dry air aloft, although the vertical shear distribution at this time is now very low. So we'll just have to see what happens again. Either way, this seems to be a rainmaker, mainly for parts of Florida over this weekend. Again, the combined this wave energy combined with a front that's going to be dipping down here could bring the rain chances up. So locally heavy rainfall, maybe the potential for gusty winds. We kind of get that in a normal summertime thunderstorm here in Florida anyway. So not really something that's going to be a washout, but rain chances will be going up. And again, we could be seeing something try to develop, but right now nothing really substantial and it's certainly not uh, worth losing any sleep over, okay? So with that being said, hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.